Hey, I'm here with another movie review. This one is a film I haven't seen in a while, but I did get the chance to pick it up last night. I actually forgot about it, but I recently just watched it again, actually, this morning. Uh, kind of start off my day. And anyway, I'm going to go ahead and show you what it is. It's the movie Creep. This one here, I got this in a four film pack at the local Walmart. And when you get four movies or more for five dollars, you know they're all going to be great. So I'm trying to watch, I was trying to watch the first one in the series called Drive Through about some killer clown. It's actually what's the screaming in the background, that's what that is. But the movie has been so awful the past 30 minutes or so. I just gave up. This had some sequences of gore, but they're all very terribly done. The acting's bad. The, mu the music's awful. Basically, there's nothing in this film so far that I have seen worth continuing wasting my time watching, so I'm just going to go to this review on Creep. Um, the movie Creep is about... It was, well, it was released in the UK in 2004 first. This, for it gets more important. But the movie itself is about the London subway system and sewer system in which there is this little mutant creepy little guy who kills people and it never really tells but I guess because he eats them I guess that's how he survives and he feeds something parts of the people to the he has rats follow him I guess because it stinks and he just bonded with them so he feeds like certain parts of the people to the rats and the movie is basically about a woman who was left locked in a sub a locked in the subway station on accident. I don't know, it doesn't really explain that one why she how she was locked down there because it would seem like somebody would check for her. And it even mentions in the movie she actually asked someone, Isn't it weird that no one checks the subway systems and makes sure no one else is down here at the night time? It doesn't really explain why she's down there, but whatever. There is they uh, a sewer maintenance guy He's down there as well. Two homeless people. One of which has a pretty brutal scene in the movie, I thought. It isn't graphic, but it's still pretty disturbing. And the mutant himself. And a couple other people. Anyway, the movie is more based on disturbing type of bleak imagery and stuff. So much more than having this really thick plot. I mean, it does have a plot, but it doesn't really explain certain things. And there's plenty of loopholes you pick up on, I'm sure, if you watch the movie. But, anyway, as far as getting into the movie, like I said, it's just basically about these people all trapped in the subway system, and they're caught by this mutant man thing, and they're just trying to figure out how to get it back out to survive. The one reason I think this film, I picked this film out to kind of give it a review and get my thoughts on it is because, have, even though it's lack of really intense graphic violence, it does have very disturbing imagery in it, like the scene where I was talking about where the woman dies pretty brutally, the homeless lady. He does this fake birth type thing. You'd have to see it kind of see what I'm talking about. He has his stirrups and he puts on these gloves and all this, but it's a really creepy sequence of how he goes into it. And then when she is giving birth, so to say, in, the, in that sequence, he takes this really long serrated blade type thing and just shoves it up inside her I mean just gouges up in her vagina and then he starts working his way up and I guess it is like I said it's not graphics so it doesn't show it but he's like just grinding her into pretty in, pretty intense I thought the one thing though about this movie is I'm not too big in the monster movies and all that and the slasher films oh well I like some slasher films but the whole mutant monster type thing but the monster, or the mutant, or whatever in this movie, the, the creep, he is actually, he is a creepy little, little, little guy. Uh, it shows, I think the, I don't know if this DVD does, but the first time I saw it, it actually had bonus footage and stuff, so you could see behind the scenes of the character that played the creep. And he's a kind of a small guy, but he's really muscular kind of guy. And in the film, he can, he does like almost like parkour. In certain kind of sequences, and he has this really weird back call thing that he does. It sounds like a screeching sound, and this is the way they did the the makeup and the effects on his face and everything. And his, like his skull cap isn't even. You can see the the ridges of where the skull divides and all that. It, it's really creepy. 
Honestly, like, like that's the one thing that really captured my attention is the actual monster thing. And the rest of that doesn't bother me. He is a creepy little guy. And as far as gore, they like to say there is a few sequences in it. The most memorable one, the problem for me, was the butchering the woman in the stirrups. And there's also um, a scene where the things that I'll try to demonstrate this. There are these things that they connect desks to. And they're long and they got sharp ends. I don't know what they're called, but anyway, I'm not an industrial worker. There's one of those sticking out of the wall, and this one of the guys, they they get into a fist fight, he's, he's beating this mutant thing, like hardcore beating it. And then the woman, the main protagonist in the story, is about to kill him, and she misses. And when she misses, it gives the mutant an opportunity, and he takes this worker's head and just shoves it into this thing. But the thing that is disturbing is because when he shoves it, it doesn't go through his head like most horror movies. And instead, it's going like straight through. He actually shoves once, and it just goes inside the guy's head. And it's really graphic. It's actually fairly realistic looking. Blood kind of sprays out, and the guy like just kind of realizes what happened. He's got a thing stuck inside his head, and, and like I said, still going through the thing. He actually takes his head and just like kind of shoves it on there. It's a pretty intense scene. But as far as uh, anything else. I mean, there's certain other gore sequels and stuff, but they're not really all that memorable. But as far as just the movie overall, it is definitely a creepy, disturbing movie, and especially for it to be in the... I think it was kind of released as, I mean, it's a major motion picture, but kind of a more popular one in the UK. It's pretty creepy, to be honest. Uh, it's a lot of disturbing imagery, a very bleak atmosphere, and just kind of a dark kind of presence the whole time of the movie. So, I, mean, I enjoyed it. Um, like I said, I got this four-pack film. It's got Drive Through Creep, Boy Eats Girl, and Ta Tamara. And I have watched any of the other ones. I'm sorry, I kind of watched Drive Through, but like I said, it is awful. I would not tell anyone to watch that movie. It is terrible. Um, the other two I haven't seen yet. I might get something up on them eventually, but so far, I'm not having high hopes for any of the rest of these movies. But Creep is definitely worth checking out. I'm sure you can find it somewhere cheap. Anyway, yeah, it's worth checking out. You can watch for yourself, kind of see what you think. And uh, I guess until next time, you guys take it easy.